Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test, and I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. We are conducting this exam in Jharkhand, Ranchi. The time right now is 14 o'clock. May I see your passport? Certainly. Here's my passport. Please take a look. And what is your full name? My full name is Ria Singh. Please call me Ria. Tip 1. Start strong. When introducing yourself and presenting your passport, speak in full sentences. Don't just say, yeah, sure. Instead, say, certainly. Here's the passport I have used to register for this exam. Please have a look. Just like Ria, this will build your confidence and fluency so you can get higher scores. When asked for your name, give your full name and then tell the examiner, please call me by my first name. It's this kind of introduction that sets the stage for band 8s and band 9s. Okay, Ria. For part 1, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? Currently, I am pursuing studies. I am enrolled in the Bachelor's Degrees of Mathematics. Do you have a hobby? Yes, I have a hobby. I am passionate about painting. I feel joy and relaxation in expressing myself through art. I explore a new colors, textures and techniques and also serve me as a form of self-expression when I am dealing with art. I particularly like to paint a landscape or nature related paintings. It's a wonderful way to unwind and channel my artistic side. For the icebreaker questions, like for the rest of the speaking, make sure to give answers, explanations, and examples. Like when an examiner asks you, do you have any hobbies? Instead of listing lots of hobbies, reading, listening to music, playing sports, focus on just one or two and give clear explanations. I like to read books because I'm enthralled with the adventures provided by good literature. Just yesterday, I started to read the book Lord of the Rings. It's this kind of detailed communication that leads to higher scores. Let's talk about emails. Do you often send emails? Yes, I often send email related academic purpose, at least four or five emails each day as discussing about my assignment guidelines with my professor or coordinating with my classmates related group projects, etc. How important do you think emails are in today's world? Emails are highly important in today's world because it is a very efficient way of communication. It is easy information exchange. I usually send emails with my professor to discuss about assignment guidelines or just discuss with my classmate about some assignments. Yesterday, I sent a last minute email to my classmate to discuss about group project. What kind of emails do you usually send? I usually send academic related emails such as discussing about the project with my classmates, scheduling meetings with my colleagues or requesting clarification with my professors such as the email I sent yesterday was related to quadratic equation. How do you feel when you receive a personal email? When I receive a personal email, I feel very happy and connected, especially when it is from a family friend or my close friend. Recently, I received an email from my dad encouraging me from my studies and I felt over the moon after reading it. Do you think emails are more convenient than traditional letters? Why or why not? Yes, emails are more convenient than traditional letters because it facilitates efficient communication, easy archiving, eliminate the traditional way of sending emails to postage. Uh, for example, if you want to send an email to an employer, it helps you to reach the resume easy to the employer with eliminating the time of sending the email. How often do you check your email inbox? I check my email inbox almost every day to keep myself updated about academic related information such as cancellation of any classes or just update myself with the university announcements. Have you ever had any issues or misunderstandings due to email communication? Yes, there have been instances where there was miscommunication due to 
absence of non-verbal cues in email. A month ago, there was a misinterpretation of tone of an email which lead to misunderstanding with one of my classmates. It got resolved after speaking face to face with her. How do you feel about receiving promotional or marketing emails? Promotional or marketing emails can be informative, but access of them can be overwhelming. I enjoy getting exclusive discounts or information about my favorite brand, but receiving them every day excessively can be bothersome. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For the Ria does an outstanding job answering questions in part one about emails. Her coherence, fluency, lexical resource, grammatical range, and accuracy, as well as pronunciation, reach at least a band eight. Very good in English. This is clearly present when the examiner asks, have you ever had miscommunications due to email communications? She uses the present perfect in her answer and says, yes, I have had misunderstandings when communicating with emails and not having verbal cues. And then she explains and gives an example. It is important to reflect the grammar of questions. Make sure to practice this. When the grammar of the question is present perfect, immediately respond with, yes, I have. I have experienced this. In this way, the examiner knows that you're able to reflect appropriate grammar. You can practice this kind of language on our website by connecting with other students. Click on Student Partner Speaking and find speaking partners around the world. When ready, you can click on the Interview Speaking Practice button to book an assessment with a native English speaking tutor. Now, on to part two. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I'm going to show you some questions. You will have one minute to read these questions. Think about your answers. You can take notes during this time if you wish. You have your note paper and your pencil there. And then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Talk about a creative idea you have had at home, at work, or at school. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. During my time studying in Ranchi University, I had this uh, creative idea of creating an Olympic math for my fellow students. This idea struck me in the second year when I realized that students have a fear for math and they lack enthusiasm towards math. I wanted to create a positive platform for students so they feel enthusiastic about math. To bring this idea into fruition, I took support from my faculty, administrations and my peer. I discussed about this creative idea with my professors and they were thrilled about this idea and uh, they helped me throughout the process and guided me. We secure venue and gather all the resources required for this quiz like games, puzzles and extended invitation to all the students from all the different departments. The Math Olympics idea is innovative because it aims to transfer the perception of math being daunting to enjoyable. It blends learning with healthy competition making math accessible to all the students of different proficiency. Furthermore, it also fostered critical thinking, problem solving ability among students and positive impact toward maths and students feel very confident and they feel that like they will also take such competition in future. This idea was innovative because it helped to transfer the perception of math from being difficult 
to fun and enjoyable. That is the end of part two. Your time is up. I will stop you there. We will now continue with part three. Ria does a lovely job presenting her creative idea on Math Olympics. She explains when she had this idea, the reason that she had this idea, the details of the idea, what she needed for this idea to become reality, such as getting permission from the faculty and staff at the university. Then she explains the results of the idea, mentioning that students are now more happy talking about math and doing math equations. And then she even suggests some improvements for the future. Whenever discussing an idea for part two, keep these steps in mind. The origin of the idea, the timing of the idea, the requirements needed for the idea to become a reality, the results and improvements. As long as you cover these points while paying attention to the questions on the cue card, you too will do a stellar job. Practice your answer for this part two cue card and send it to us in MP3 format for a free speaking assessment. Simply send it to the email also in the description below. Now on to part three. We will now continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Can you put your note paper to the side? Turn it over, please, your pencil as well. Let's talk more about creative ideas. In what situations do people often come up with creative ideas? People often come up with creative ideas when they are faced with real life problems, such as coming up with alternative energy sources to combat environmental problems such as electronic car or developing medical devices to improve healthcare. Part three questions are specific and challenging, but don't worry, don't panic. Keep in mind that the topic is related to speaking part two, creative ideas. So remember what you said for part two and make connections. Keep in mind the ideas that you generated during the one minute preparation time. These can be very useful for part three. And keep in mind the general truths that apply to most humans. Such as this question when the examiner asks, what are common situations where people come up with creative ideas? Here Rhea cleverly realizes that most humans tend to be creative when they are under pressure, such as finding energy efficient solutions in a world that's facing an energy crisis. Keep this in mind and practice answering with these general truths before your exam. Send us an answer to this question in MP3 format to the email address here and in the video description to earn a badge. Collect three badges from three different videos and you can get a free 10 minute speaking interview with a native English speaking tutor. Now on to the rest of the interview and the lesson. To watch this full interview and lesson for over a hundred speaking interview videos, original practice exams, a fully interactive course and an app for your phone, visit and join our premium IELTS package at aehelp.com. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Use the code IMAGINE9 for an additional 10% discount. Simply click the link in the video description below. We are an IDP affiliate, a British Council partner, an IELTS test registration center, and I'm a British Council agent. We have helped thousands of students pass their IELTS exams. Just listen to what this student has to say. Tomorrow on 19th September, I'm flying to UK. As 22nd of September, my course is going to start. Finally, my dream is going to come true. I'm super excited as I will have exposure of another continent. On the other hand, having butterfly in my stomach. All the best to A help support and million of thanks for supporting me, getting me the, my dream come true. Adrian, I never ever met a mentor like you. Wish you all the best for your future. Thank you. Begin learning for success. Join now. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch another video. Click right up here. and. 
Click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.